Have you ever played something that was, despite being a fundamentally flawed experience, you still enjoy it quite a bit? I mean, there's a couple games that easily fit this mold, but the one that I always think of when I think of games like this is Croc Legend of the Golos, a PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn release in 1997. It was developed by Arinot Software, a company who many people will probably recognize as the company that developed Star Fox and Star Fox 2. Croc originally started as a 3D Yoshi racing game, and that game would go on to actually become the inspiration for Super Mario 64. Now, how's the game, you may ask, and well, that's a good question. Starting up the game, you'll be treated to a cutscene where you get Croc's origin story. Basically, Croc shows up on a beach and is raised by the Gobos, then one day Baron Dante shows up and kidnaps the King of the Gobos and all of his subjects. Now Croc has to save them all. It's truly the deepest of wars, ladies and gentlemen, and it's at this point there are a few things I'd like to stop and point out. First, the cutscene. It's all done in in-game engine. No crappy early CG here which is actually kind of nice. Second, there are pretty much no other cutscenes in this game, which is good. A game like this, you don't need a long-winded explanation of why you're platforming. Simplicity is key here, you guys. Lastly is our protagonist, Croc. Now let me tell you guys this. He is adorable. No, I mean, everything he does is just so heart-wrenchingly cute that you're bound to go, aww, at least, one time while you play this game. Whether it's from the sounds Croc makes from doing a ground pound, or the cool 180 degree turn he does from hitting the circle button, everything Croc does is adorable, plain and simple. To go with this adorableness, Croc's world is equally adorable. Whether it's because of the enemies sporting a laughably large pair of eyes, or just because the levels are upbeat and colorful. Combine that with what must be one of gaming's most underrated soundtracks of all time, Croc from top to bottom is undeniably enjoyable just due to sheer charm alone. Now how is the actual gameplay itself? Well, it's unfortunately the biggest downfall of the game. You see, the main issue with Croc is that the game has tank controls. Yes, that's right, the same thing that plagued the original Resident Evil. Now, don't get me wrong. Tank controls are inherently bad. The original Resident Evils prove that games that are built around tank controls can work. However, for just as well as they can work, they can fail. And games with these controls fit in either the category of working or failing horribly. So where does Croc fit into the spectrum of good and bad tank controls you may be wondering. And to be honest with you, it's kinda in between. You see, there are levels in this game that are wide open and sprawling, like take for instance the first level of the game, and they work very well with this control scheme in mind. But then there are levels like this one in the final world, where the game feels near impossible to make the type of tight knit platforming the game requires you to make. So I'd be willing to say overall though, the game is 70% designed well, 30% that's designed badly. Which, you know, a 70% hit ratio isn't that bad by any means, 
But then you have the overall goal of every level to also consider. Basically, you need to collect all five of the colored gems in each stage, along with six of the gobos in each stage, to get 100% completion. Now the objective is totally optional, you can beat the game without doing this, but if you don't, you're missing out on the final world in the game, along with the true ending of the game. So levels in the game end up becoming either way more difficult than they need to be to complete due to the tank controls, or way too short if you don't try to collect everything. Don't get me wrong, I like this design choice as it means you decide how frustrating your adventure will be, however, I can't help but feel it's a lazy way to try and fix the control scheme of the game. It amounts to Croc being a game that when the controls work well at the stages is incredibly fun, but when they don't, Croc can be a frustratingly difficult game. Also, as a quick by the way, I recommend playing this game with a D-pad. It makes some of the tricky jump sequences a little more bearable due to the precise jumping and movement that comes with the D-pad. It's why I would recommend the Sega Saturn version to the PS1 version, because, well, the Saturn's D-pad is light years better than the PS1's crud D-pad. Overall, can I recommend Croc Legend of the Gobos? It depends. Do you like 3D platformers from the PS1 era? If so, then yeah, give it a shot. It's a pretty decent little game. If not, then I'd just say skip it. You're not missing anything genre-defining by any way. Overall, I give Croc 3.5 stars out of 5. It's a pretty good little game with some flaws and all. Now, this wouldn't actually be the last time we'd ever see Croc, believe it or not. Croc would eventually get a sequel, ironically named Croc 2. I've never played this game all the way through, or well, actually, I've never played it, honestly. So, why not? Join me next time, and ladies and gentlemen, I will be reviewing Croc 2 for you. So be sure to subscribe down below, be sure to comment, and be sure to follow me on Twitter and like this video and whatnot. Have a wonderful day, YouTube, and peace.